him be uh, the focus, let him lead, let him guide. I tell you, sometimes I think the Christian life would be a lot simpler if those of us as Christians could actually begin to do that, begin to live that song, breathe that song, pray that song, just to give me Jesus. The only thing I really need is Jesus. I only need Jesus. Amen. A few weeks ago, I preached a message entitled, Why Does God Love Me? I hope some of you remember that message. And in that message, we, we talked about three things that why God loved. God loved me because He created me. God loved me because I'm His child. God loved me because I'm His most prized possession. That's why, does, that's why God loves me. That's why Jesus sent His, the Lord sent Jesus to the earth so that I could be uh, set free. And then once we become a child of God, and really it's the instance of being a child of God, like every good child, we need a parent. Uh, Pastor Greg shared last week about the statistics of what happens in, in homes and families when dads are not there. What, what takes place? I mean, there's this, it's a dysfunction that happens. Well, as children of God, we need a parent too. I think sometimes we as adults, especially adult Christians, forget that we need a parent. We forget that we're not yet finished. We forget yet that there's still things that can go on in my life. And we get busy with all the things of life. And God's just wanting to be my father. God's wanting to be my parent. And so there is a process for us that I'm going to submit to you, suggest to you this morning, that is we begin to be reparented by God. Or God becomes something different than just the God that's sitting on the throne of heaven that's waiting for me to die so I can come into his presence, but he becomes something more than that. That through Jesus, he becomes a parent. Now, some of you are already thinking, well, does that mean I've been a lousy parent or my parents were lousy parents? No, that's not what I'm saying. Please hear that. But I will say this, I've been a parent now for going on 30, 32 years and I'm not perfect. I haven't been a perfect parent. I haven't done everything correctly all the time. And the reality is we all have had human parents who are not perfect. They're not perfect. They're just human. It's not a slam to any of us. None of us are perfect. All of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. All sin and fall short of the glory of God. All sin and fall short of the glory of God. Even our parents. Even us as parents. We are not perfect. We never have been. We never will be. We were born imperfect. We will remain imperfect until the moment I am transformed into the glory of God when I'm standing before him. I live an imperfect life. None of us are perfect. And so there's this idea that maybe a perfect God, a perfect father, might have some things to say to me. Might have some ideas to present to me. Might desire to parent me. Or maybe to fill in the gaps where maybe my parents didn't, didn't quite get it right. Or, or maybe for some of us who've never had parents, actually be my parent. And so the idea is to first to begin to understand that I, we're not slamming parents here this morning. The question is, can God be my perfect parent? And begin to take me places that my earthly parents cannot take me. 
begin to instill in me things that my earthly parents cannot instill in me, begin to speak into my life in a way that my earthly parents cannot speak into me. Like I said, I've been a parent for 32 years, and if there's one immutable thing I've learned about being a parent is that God can do things that I can't in my children. I can try, work hard, I can do all the things I think I should do, I can pray, I can, I, can, I can do everything right that I think is possibly right, but God still has the ability to step in and do something even more. And so, reparenting. We're going to start this morning with several verses that just speak about God, who God is. Psalm 68, 5 says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. John 20, 17, Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Those are absolutely profound words. Jesus, on the day of his resurrection, proclaimed that Father, was, Father God was our Father just like he is his Father. Your Father. Galatians 4, 6, Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, the, heart, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Ephesians 1, 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. To know him better. May our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. And finally this morning, Jeremiah 29, 11, I think my Favorite verse in the whole Bible, I believe this is my favorite verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. How many of us want a father like that? How many of us will admit to ourselves this morning that our earthly fathers may have missed the mark? And maybe God wants to do something today. Not in condemnation of our earthly fathers, not in condemnation of, of those people, not in us being condemned, but in a revelation or a new thought or a new thing that he may want to do. I know I've learned in my life that my earthly father has had a great influence on my life both negative and positive. That there were things in my life that I know that I have been both negative and positive influence in both of my kids. Father God is only going to be positive. Father, God is not going to influence me in a direction that is not the best for me. He's not going to point me down a road that's going to be the wrong road. He's not going to lead me down a path that's destruction. He's only going to lead me in a great and amazing way. How is the Lord desiring, or would the, how would the Lord desire to reparent me? I'm going to look at four quick things this morning. I can tell you that these are all areas where the Lord is reparenting in my own life, working in my life. I'm confident working in all of our lives. The first one is He wants to reparent me in my spirit. John 3, verses 3 and 6 says, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. The Lord wants to reparent me in my spirit, my inmost being, in the inner parts of who I am. The Lord wants to 
reparent me. He wants to bring me to a new place. He wants to instill something in me that has not yet been instilled. Interesting, this conversation Jesus was having was with Nicodemus, who was up in the higher echelon of Jewish leaders of his day. And he was bringing Nicodemus to the realization that all of his religion and all of his laws and all of the things that he had been following all of his life, though were good, were not the only answer. There was more to it than that. There was more to it than just this list of things or these rules or these regulations, but there was a spiritual thing that God wanted to bring into his life. We know that Nicodemus was one of the ones who buried Jesus later on. So we can be assured that somewhere between the time Jesus had the conversation and Jesus' crucifixion, something happened in Nicodemus' spirit that led him to be involved in the burial of Jesus. That was a change. That was a reparenting. That was something that took place in him that shifted him, moved him from a place of correction, questions to a place of following, to a place of something different. Jesus wants to parent us, reparent us in our spirits. He wants to change us from the inside out, not from the outside in. See, what Jesus wants to do in our spirit is just the opposite of the world. See, because the world says everything looks good on the outside and nobody can really see what's going on on the inside. But Jesus says it has to be from the inside out. This is really the idea of being truly converted to follow Christ, where I am truly being transformed starting in my spirit, not in my mind, not in my flesh, in my spirit. That breeze begins to blow into my life of the Holy Spirit, and I am transformed, I am changed from the inside out. Secondly, this morning, Jesus would want, the Father would want to parent me in my mind. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Many of us, lots of us, lots of Christians have begun the process of the Spirit, but get hung up at the mind. But now we turn Christ into something analytical, Christ into something that's mental or intellectual. And Paul is telling the church at Rome to be transformed, renew your mind, let the Lord renew your mind, let the Father renew your mind so that you can test and prove the will of God. I can tell you there is one question that comes up Two questions that come up over and over and over again with working with people over the years. One is, why did that happen? The other is, what does God want me to do? Those are the two questions that will come up invariably all the time. Why did that happen? And what does God want me to do? There are literally millions of Christians out there today who are hung up on why a certain event happened in their life and wondering what it is that God wants them to do. And they find themselves locked or into in a position or a place where they cannot move because they don't have the answer to those questions. There's an event that took place and has locked them up. They want to know what God wants them to do, and they're uncertain, and so they don't move. Paul tells us to have our minds renewed. Father God wants to reparent us in our minds, and here's the key. The key to being reparent in my mind is one word, trust. 
not having all the answers or having it figured out, trust. Who am I trusting? Myself? <laughs> Just shake your head. Not me. I can't trust me. I cannot trust me. I can't even trust me to do the right thing all the time. Right? I can't trust me to have the answers. So who does? God. And becomes a faith venture when I begin to trust. I begin to, the renewing is the word trust. I begin to not, no longer trust myself, trust the people around me, trust anything but God. And then I begin to move. That's the renewing, is trust. Trust. Thirdly, I'm going to be reparented in my will. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? One of the more famous verses in the Bible, Jesus himself is speaking. But yet it applies to us today in the 21st century. It applies so directly to us. Why do you call me Lord, but don't do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, but ignore what the Word says? Why do you call me Lord on Sunday, but then on Monday go to work and do something completely different? Why do you call me Lord on election day, but as soon as you walk into the election booth, you vote something different? It's so applicable to us today. Because we have taken the idea or the concept of Jesus being Lord and made it general or reflective or depending upon my particular circumstances. But that's not what it will be. That's not what it will ever be. Jesus says in a parable that at some point in his, there's going to, he's going to return and he's going to gather his church and there's going to be people standing outside and they're going to be knocking on the door and they're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, let me in. Lord, Lord, let me in. This is, I did all of these things. Look at these things that I did. Look at these things that I did. Knocking on the door. I want in. I want in. I want in. I want in. And Jesus is going to come to the door and he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I do not know you. There's this deeper place where he wants to parent us. We need to know Jesus. Ephesians 1.17, that we will know him better. Not just know about him, but to know him. That, my friends, I believe is a lifelong pursuit. It never ends. You will be on the road to knowing Him better every day for the rest of your life. You never arrive. You never have it all figured out. Ever. Until the moment he comes. So there's this desire of my father to, to reparent me in my will. I like to think of it like, like this. Uh, you know, I, I've raised two kids. I now have eight grandkids. Uh, one immutable thing I've learned is that kids are kids no matter what generation they're in. And kids will try you every time. You know why they will do that? Because it's created in them. And if you're going to get their attention, each kid has to be treated differently. One kid, you can do one thing, and they will just like, okay. And you do the same thing with the other kid, and they'll look at like you like you are absolutely nuts. I'm not doing that. 
Are you crazy? That's why the Father God, knowing my will, each one of us, our wills, we are just like that. Every one of us is different. It takes something different from God, from every one of us, to get our attention. Sometimes it, thinks, it takes bad things. It takes hard things. It takes things like death, heartache, pain, hurt. To get our attention. Sometimes it takes him taking things away from us. Have you ever taken something away from one of your children trying to get their attention? Have you ever said, no, you can't have that toy till tomorrow. I'll put that on the refrigerator and when you have a better attitude, I'll give it back to you. Anybody ever done that? Why do we think God won't do that with us? Are we not his children? See, we think because we're adults, we're beyond that. That we've gone past that. That we've matured to the point where we don't need that anymore. And God says, I am from the day of beginning to the day of end. And you think you're mature, I'm way better than you, buddy. I've been down this road few thousand million times. Why do you call me Lord? Because the Lord wants to reparent me in my will. See, I believe just like us as parents or grandparents, nothing excites me more than my grandchildren when I say, please don't do that, and they stop. It actually makes me feel like I have a clue about what I'm doing. That's exactly how God feels about us. When he says, stop. And we stop. Or go. And we go. Or do. And we do. And ultimately, as our Father, that's His desire for us because His desire is that he, we know the plan, he has the plans for us for hope in the future. And so just like when we look at our kids or our grandkids, we can look and we can say, if He touches that, it's not going to be fun. Please don't do that. Because we can see farther than them. And He can see farther than us. So he wants to parent me in my will. But note, he created me with that will. So he does not want to destroy my will. He wants to mold my will. He does not want to crush me. He wants to mold me. So that I can do the things he he has planned for me. Lastly, this morning, he wants to parent me in my emotions. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. God loves me as his child, but God's desire is that I grow. And I mature. He wants us to do that in our emotions. He wants us to do that in how we respond to things. How we react to things. How we receive things. Does it ever feel like to you sometimes that sometimes we're still living in junior high even with adults it's 
Sometimes I feel like I get some sort of magic transporter or something, and I find myself in fifth grade. Because sometimes we just, our emotions are so strong. And we have this really, really strong desire inside of us to be right, number one, and to win, number two. And that usually comes out in our emotions. I do it. We all do it. And before you know it, you're sitting around and and it feels like you're in fifth grade. And you're sitting at the lunch table and there's Bertha doing Bertha's thing, just like Bertha always does. Or there's Larry, there's John, whoever. And it's the same thing. It's just different. I think that's what the Lord would want us as believers to to get a hold of here, that his desire is for us to mature in the Lord, mature in him, to get our emotions in a proper place and and use that emotion for what he desires us to use it for. But to get out of fifth grade, to graduate, to move up, Now, the key to the emotions, I believe, is the three things in front of the emotions, my spirit, my mind, and my will. I believe the emotions may be the toughest thing that we will actually allow God to begin to do in our life. And it won't won't happen until something happens in my spirit, something happens in my mind, and something happens with my will. Then my emotions will begin to line up. But we still, just so you know, and here's, here's the grace card today. Somebody say amen. Here's the grace card. We will never do it perfectly. And so there will be, always be certain things that will trigger me. Certain words, certain attitudes, certain actions, certain things. And it'll be like I'm transported to fifth grade right now, and there is Bobby. And me and Bobby have been fighting for the last 30 years, and we're still fighting. I had a class reunion five years ago. They called me the other day to see if I'd be in charge of it again. I said, no. Love you all, but no. I don't need to go back another 25 years again. I don't need to go to another weekend where we're 30 years younger and we're all still acting like we're in fifth grade. I don't, I don't need that. I'm ready to move on. Ready to move past that. Doesn't mean I don't care about those people, because I do. But there's a point where, really? I think the emotions is a challenging thing for us to do. And I'm convinced that we won't do it until there's a spiritual change, there's a mental change, and there's a change inside of my will. And all of that must happen because I know that I'm loved. The core to that is I know that I'm loved. No matter where I am, no matter what's going on in my life, I rest on the fact that I know that I'm loved. And because I know that I'm loved, then I will allow my Father God, my parent, to begin to to mold me. Because he has my best interest at heart. It's not because Pastor Marty's preaching a sermon or because I should do it or can do it or or might ought to do it or because that's the way it should be. It's because I'm loved that I want to be changed. I want to be repaired. I want to be renewed. I want something different in my life. I don't like the way I'm living, and I want to be different. And so because I'm loved, I'm willing to allow my father, who is my perfect parent, to begin to speak into these things in my life. And not only speak into him, now I begin to listen to what he's saying, and I begin to apply what he's asking me to do.
but he always still loves me. Even when I crash and burn. Even when I'm at home and my grandkids are going crazy off the wall and it's raining outside and it's like, can you guys just please be quiet? And that's what it sounds like. Can't you imagine what God's thinking sometimes? When he's watching Christians, people who are Christians out there in this world, people who are, you know he's just up there and he's thinking, really? Really? I mean, do you really think that that's what I would want you to do or say or act? It all boils down to that I'm loved. God loves me because I'm his creation, I'm his child, I'm his most prized possession, and because I know that I'm loved and he is my father, now I'm going to let him start working in my spirit. I'm going to let him start working in my mind. I'm going to let him start working in my will. I'm going to start letting him work in my emotions. But it all boils down to, I'm loved. I'm loved. He's my father. He's not some mean, vicious dictator sitting up there with a a rod and he's like, you know, he's my father. He's my perfect parent. That wants to speak into my life, his child's life. How will he speak? He will speak prominently, really, I believe, in three clear ways. One, he will speak, he will speak to you in your own prayer life. He will say, he will speak directly to you. He will let you know, this is what I need you to do. The other way he will speak, he will speak in your word. In his word. He will speak to you right off the pages of this book. If you're not reading this book, then you're not hearing him. Because this is him. This is how he will speak. This is how he will parent you. He will parent you right out of this book. He will speak directly into your life as as your parent. Thirdly, he will speak to you through other people. That's how he'll speak. And it will be because he loves you. Because he loves me, I'm willing to begin to let him be my parent. Not because I trust myself, but because I trust him. And because I trust him, he's speaking, I will let him be my parent. And then I will begin to let go of some things that I need to let go of. I will begin to be transformed. I will begin to look and sound and feel, be different. I invite you to bow your heads. This morning as I've been speaking, the first thing I want to make really clear here is, is the first one is, he wants to parent me in my spirit means that he wants to become my Lord and my Savior. He wants me to acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior. He wants me to be saved, sanctified, set free, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants me to be brought into the kingdom. And that's where my spirit begins. For those of us who've been in the spirit, saved in the spirit in many years, that's still true for us today. There's always a possibility of renewing that commitment, renewing what it is that God's done. You will not receive the other things until first you have received the Spirit. Without the Spirit, it won't happen. Your flesh will overtake and you will never change. You won't change. 
You won't change in your mind, you won't change in your will, and you won't change in your emotions without the Spirit. It won't happen. Because it's through the Spirit He's going to begin to move. So today, if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, today is a day to open your heart to His Spirit and let Him move. Secondly, today, as a believer, you're sitting here and and I hope you heard my heart. I'm not slamming parents today, any of them. That's not what this is about. But you know that one of these three areas is a problem area for you. You know that you struggle in your mind. You know that you struggle in your will. And you know that you struggle in your emotions. And the Lord's wanting to speak into that today. In some form, in some way, He's wanting to begin that process of becoming your parent. To begin reparenting you. Some small, probably very small way here today. The Lord wants to begin to do a work. In all of our lives. In every one of our lives, the Lord wants to begin to do a work worship team would come on up. I'm going to pray. I'm going to invite you just to come forward as the Lord would lead as normal. Uh, If you want somebody to pray for you, someone can pray for you. There's anointing oil up here. Anyone can pray for for you. You want Mary and I to pray for you, we're happy to pray for you, pray with you, for you, in whatever form that may take. My heart desires to let Jesus be in charge here today. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for your love, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you absolutely, we know that today, if we don't know anything else, we know that you love us. We recognize that there are times in life that things, hard things have happened, and so we don't, we're not not sure why that's happened. Uh, We're not sure always what it is that you want us to do, but we do know that you love us. You love us beyond those things that have taken place in our life. You love us past that stuff. You love us unconditionally. As a parent should, you absolutely love us. And then today, your your desire is to begin to maybe take us a little deeper today. Deeper in our spirits. Deeper in our minds, deeper in our wills, deeper in our emotions. And gently bring correction to us. Correct us. As a good parent should, you want to you want to help us see a better way. See a better path, see a better direction. See how that's not really what we need to do. So we open our lives to you today. We open you to the Holy Spirit. We invite you into this place to minister to us, to speak into our hearts. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name.